Hello everyone, welcome to Demand Forecasting for NYC Tax Data, a machine learning project. So if you have been to New York uh, City, you would have especially seen this yellow taxis going in and around of every nook and corner of New York. So every month there are like millions of taxis which are taken up by the residents uh, to, to travel around the cities. So I was especially looking into how we can use this data to forecast basically the demand for the taxi services. So uh, looking at the goals of this uh, tax and the goal of this project was to understand where the traffic hotspots are basically to understand which are the main traffic hotspots for pickup and also for the drop off points and also to understand the travel patterns um, which vary by time to time and the week, day of the week and, and also how the weather impacts uh, the travel. So if, there is a, if it is raining or snowing, uh, does more people take up taxis or they prefer to use uh, the, the transportation like public transportation and so on. So also at the end of this, we were like trying to predict models, uh, to predict models uh, which could actually take up uh, predicting prediction in future travel patterns. And also I uh, looked up into how the uh, impact of ride hailing services like Lyft and Uber have impacted the New York taxi services. So is this is this very useful? Uh, yes, it can be really useful for city planners, city developers, and also transportation companies in various ways. Like uh, they can use this analysis and uh, improve the transportation infrastructure, like in investing in new bus services, new taxis and so on. Uh, also, you, they can optimize the public transportation, like identifying the areas where there's very high demand for taxis at a certain amount of time. They can adjust their routes and schedules accordingly. And also, which will help in managing the traffic conditions by analyzing historic data and identifying where uh, you have to uh, adjust. So moving on to the data collection, so I was uh, I got the NYC ta taxi data by uh, NYC Taxi and Limousine Commission government site, and the data uh, was pretty much very raw data, and it had to be cleaned. Uh, had there were many missing values, uh, errors like incorrect values, also many outliers which needed to be corrected. Also, I looked up at uh, weather data for this time period of three years where I have used uh, the data. So I have got the data from weather API and basically uh, to find out what was the, uh, what was the temperature uh, weather data related to that day and time. So moving on, uh, some of the interesting findings which were uh, like obtained from this, from this project was like understanding basically how the New York taxi data works and can be used uh, to predict our goals. So first, one of the most interesting thing was like, we found out that when was the time of the day, which of the time of the days were like, there were a large number of taxi pickups and drop off. So if you see, um, this was mostly like in the evenings and in the evenings had a very high pickup and drop off. And this would relate to the people who are coming out of their work and uh, finding a cab to reach their home. Also during the midday, we could see there were like higher number of uh, pickups and drop off. This might also correlate with the lunch timings uh, for the companies. Also we could see that uh, the passengers, uh, the number of count of passengers, how it varied throughout the week. We could see that on Sundays, even at uh, 12 a.m. in the morning, uh, there were like high number of count of passengers and it usually dwindled down uh, in the early mornings during the sunrise and it again went to peak during the evenings. But uh, if you see the same situation in the weekdays, we don't see a high count of uh, taxis during the early mornings or late night, but you see uh, it gets the number of counts starts getting picked up as it goes in the afternoon, evening, and 
during the night. So another important thing was to, as we said in the goal, that was to actually find the hotspots to uh, calculate where the major hotspots were. So firstly, like if you look at this, we actually got a, a map data of New York to find out all the boroughs and zones within the uh, city. So we did a K-mean clustering where we could find out basically where uh, where were the hotspots and we got to know a couple of hotspots. But since the data which we're looking at mostly were spatial data, we did a DB scan uh, and we could like uh, get to know which were the most pickup like zones where the most pickup points happen and where was the most uh, drop of points. So some of the few examples are like East Village uh, in the New York City had a very large amount of pickups. Also the drop offs uh, were in LaGuardia Airport, which makes sense because people who are traveling to the airport uh, would come from various parts of the, uh, of the city to the airport. So this actually makes sense. Uh, and we had other number of like we had a couple of other number of uh, hotspots for pickups and drop offs. I uh, also did uh, association rule mining to understand the behavior of the uh, passengers basically and how this behavior was driving the prediction. So it was like you see, this is a, uh, basically a, a graph on network graph to find out if the passenger count is very less and the fare uh, would actually be low because only if one passenger is traveling and also if the distance, like the trip distance is so short, then we can assume directly that the fare also would be very low. So this was one of the, uh, another interesting finding to find the relation between uh, the few of the parameters so that we can negate the, uh, we can reduce the dimensionality. Also, we did it, uh, we actually um, did one more technique called as decision trees, where, um, where I have used decision trees to predict how the fair amount, basically the total amount which comes up in the end, how it is varies. So if we uh, have done a, like a feature importance to find out which feature was mostly impacting. So the total fare was, uh, obviously it was highly correlated with the fare amount, but then you have a tip amount, which was coming next significantly highest, uh, which was very important in the total fare. So we could say that um, New York residents usually give a high amount of tip to the New York uh, taxis. This was also actually correlated uh, uh, when I did uh, SVM and linear regression to find out how we can predict the total trip time and the tip amount. So uh, SVMs actually uh, did little, I would say, little better uh, when compared to the previously explained models, but uh, I didn't perform as good because the accuracy was only 60% when I was trying to predict the trip time based on various parameters like uh, traffic, uh, traffic density, the pickup and drop off points, and also the total trip distance. As a whole, this VM, uh, as I said before, it achieved 60%. And whereas the multiple linear regression achieved almost 90% in predicting a correct trip time based on the parameters. Also, uh, also we did, uh, I did like a tip amount prediction uh, by using SVM and uh, I could see that the passengers who were picked up from uh, New York airport, JFK airport, uh, are like, were like more likely to give a higher tip uh, contrary to the passengers which were dropped off in Great Kills and Oakwood on Staten Island. Uh, so these were some of the few interesting things like people who are like being picked up from those are like one of the most zones which have very good, uh, uh, very most well of brought off boroughs in New York. So it also correlates, but the, uh, but it also can be like few, we I had only few information, so it can be uh, insufficient to come to that conclusion. Overall, uh, coming to the conclusion, uh, we could say that uh, uh, you know that the city 
tagline from in new york taxi is like city never sleeps so neither do they so we could actually identify a pattern in the demand and uh, the time of which and how the impact of weather was playing a factor in total affecting the fares and also we could i could also come up with analysis on which could shed light on the impact of ride hailing services but since i couldn't get the data uh, from uber and lyft i couldn't dwell into how actually the ride hailing services like uber and lyft have impacted the new york taxis also moving on like we could see that this analysis is very uh most important to the new york taxi commission so that they can adjust their schedules they can hire and decrease the number of taxis at certain point of time so that uh, you can efficiently manage things as a whole uh, this uh, analysis is a valuable information for the policy makers to make informed decisions um, and not be just the city of new york or taxi commission so anyone who's involved in the decision making process so uh, that's it so if you have been to new york now you know uh, like you have been uh, in a yellow cab taxi you can relate to this research so if you're planning uh, next you can need a taxi you just need to raise your hand for new york yellow cab taxi thank you